Welcome to the 2019 Sabre 38 RV Beef. So right in the very back here, you've got this little black port. If you open that up, you can see you've got the little metal tab in the bottom edge there. That'll line up with this metal tab here on your shore cord. Press it in, little eighth turn locks it into place. Screw on the threads in the back and that really locks it there. Following the cord back, you've got a 50 amp end right here. Now some campsites won't necessarily have that for you. So we will provide you with a 30 amp adapter that will take you down to 30 amp, which most campsites will have. So you're just gonna plug that straight on in. Other end just plugs on in as well. We'll also provide you with a 15 amp adapter so you can take that 30 down to a 15 so you can plug into a household outlet to charge your batteries, run your fridge, things like that. In the bumper here, if you just pop that end cap off, reach your way in, you can see you've got a sewer hose in here. It does stretch out to uh, 20 feet once it's fully extended. So just take note of those two ears right there. That is how it'll attach to your sewer system. Keeping it stored in the back bumper here just helps keep the stench out of the trailer, keeps things cleaner. Making our way down. See, so you've got your stabilizing legs there. And right here in front of the front axle, you've got your sewer system. So this is a sewer cap. It's got the same ears, just attaches on, turns into place and locks into place and that's that. So your hose will attach in the same way. When you're dumping your tanks, you can see you've got a black valve right here, another black valve here, and another black valve up there. So they are labeled up top here with the little stickers. They got gray, black, and then galley in the back there. So when you're dumping your tanks, this center one here is the one you're going to want to dump first. That is your black tank that is filled from your toilet. So that's going to be your dirtiest water. You'll dump that out first. Once that's done, you'll do your gray, which is filled up from your bathroom sink and your shower. Then once that's done, you'll go and do the galley last as that is filled from your kitchen sink. Typically your cleanest water you want coming out last. Just helps keep the sewer hose clean. And again, keeping the stench out of the trailer. <clears throat> Excuse me. The two lines back there, you've got a red and a blue. Those are your low point drains. So if you're leaving the trailer for a, a little while and you don't want your water going stagnant, <clears throat> you can just open up one of those valves or either of the valves really. So the blue one is for your cold lines and drain all of those out. And the red one is gonna be for all of your hot lines. Same idea, just drain all those out. Same idea when it comes to winterizing, you're just gonna wanna empty those out. So right here is just the exhaust for your furnace. So you just wanna make sure nothing's drooped over that. It does get hot. Right beside it, we've got your hot water tanks. So you're just going to line up that keyway, pops open, lift it up and out of the way. So on the bottom corner here, you can see you've got that little electrical switch. Turn that on, runs your hot water tank on, on uh, electricity. For propane, the switch is just inside. That'll work all that. I'll show you that once we get there. I will go over a reset procedure. The button that I'll refer to is just right there. Before you ever turn it on, whether it be with propane or electricity though, you just want to hit this relief valve right there. You open that up, a little bit of water will come out when it's full, letting you know it is safe to fire it up. Firing it up dry just runs the risk of burning out elements and things like that. Downward a bit more, we've got your storage compartment here. We'll pop that open. You can see it does see straight through the other side. That little black bag there, not too sure if you can see it, is actually housing your outside barbecue. On this side here, you can see you've got your exterior shower, three foot hose, standard head. Right up top here on the left, you've got your hot water bypass valve. So the unit is currently winterized right now. So we've got that to bypass. When you come into summertime, you're just gonna run all the antifreeze out of the system, bring it back down to normal, allow that hot water tank to fill up and you're good to go. Winterizing system on the right there is just referring to where your um, water pump is drawing from. So with it in regular winterized, it's drawing out of a hose which is actually right up top here. You just attach a hose into there and it draw from that to winterize the unit. Or you can bring it down, in which case it'll be drawing out of your fresh water tank. Filling your fresh water tank is done through this port right here. So just pop that off, take a water hose, stick it into there, turn on the water, fills up your fresh water tank. And then right beside it is your city water connection. So the same water hose would go into there, turn on, pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. Up on the very top, we've got a black tank flush. So over time, you may go to dump out your black tank and you know for a fact it is empty. However, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. You're just gonna take a water hose, stick it into there, open up the black valve, turn on the water, and that'll just flush out the tank for you. As we'd said earlier, we've got your antifreeze inlet on the side. Right beside it, we've got satellite dish hookup on top and cable TV hookup on the bottom. 
standard coax just plugs into there and will fire up at your TV location. Right here, you notice this compartment has no locks. That is your propane compartment. You cannot lock that. So on this side, you can see your propane line just feeds this little high, high pressure regulator right there. It just feeds the regulator that is on the other side of the unit. So through the front, right on the very bottom here, you've got solar panel plug-in. So just the two prong plug-in plugs into there, that charges your batteries. Above it is your docking lights. Turn on a set of blue lights on the front of the unit kind of a night vision type thing. Auto leveling, so I press the two arrows, turns it on, and then you just hit auto level and it'll level itself. I won't do that right now as I'd like to show you it inside. It's a bit more involved and a bit easier. So this right here though, you basically just hit auto level. It'll do it by itself. You just don't want to touch the unit while it's auto leveling. You just want to leave it stable. Retract all is just going to bring them back to the point where they are now, where they're just back up all the way. And once we've got you hooked up to your vehicle, we'll go through hitch height and we'll show you how that can just automatically take the trailer back to the height for hooking up your truck. Once it's uh, left alone for about two minutes, it just shuts itself off. These two ports right here are vents for your batteries. So you just wanna make sure those are not blocked. For your front storage, for all of your storage compartments, you'll get a little key just like this guy here. It sticks into there, open it up. latch up top there holds it open and inside here you can see you've got your battery boxes the unit is currently stored outside so we don't have any batteries in it right now just to save them from freezing battery shut off up here so you can see that's currently on would allow your batteries to charge or run the unit with that turned off your batteries are disconnected from the unit and will not charge inverter up here so the power button for activating that's actually just inside so if you're out dry camping and you've got two fully charged batteries and you need to run your fridge, which is a 120 volt only fridge, you'll turn this guy on to run your fridge via 12 volt. So onto this side, we've got another compartment here with no locks, as your other propane. So you can see right there, that is currently green, letting you know that there is propane in the system. It is good to go. That tank is already empty or full, so that's the reason for that. And then you can see this one arrow on the side there is pointing to this tank, letting you know that we're drawing off of this tank. If this tank were to go empty, that guy will go red, letting you know there's no more propane present. You'd switch it over to the other side, open up your other tank while this one gets filled. Right here, we've just got the other end of your storage compartment. So again, same key. Like I had said, you've got your barbecue right in there. A little 120 volt fridge. So as long as you're plugged in, this fridge is going. And right up on the wall here, you've just got a little light switch for the light bar across the front. Power outlet, as well as cable and satellite outlets here. I'm falling back. This right here is actually what you'll be hanging your barbecue off of. It's got this a very similar type of bar. We'll hook into the top and then as you let it fall, it just holds on to that. Quick connect is right down here. The only thing with this guy here is it's just like got that collar and just push it back, stick your quick connect into there and it locks into place. However, you do have the valve on the side. So with that valve open, you cannot open that collar. You need to make sure that the flow of propane is shut off before you can open that. And then, of course, just making sure that you got the dust cap on it whenever you're traveling. To the very back of the unit, you do have the storage rack back here. So it's just got the pins. You pull that safety kit out. You just take the pressure off of it. You can pull that pin out. Same thing on the other side here. Drop it down. Careful, it is heavy with the tire on it. And there you go storage, whatever, bikes, somewhere to keep things. If you are storing your bikes back here, if you're traveling with it down, you of course want to be mindful of your spare tire. You might just want to remove it. And when we're done, we're going to slide the pins back in, lock them into place. Just like so.
and that's that. So the unit does come with the ladder installed, so you've got access up there to check seals and roof condition, things like that. And you've also got the observation backup camera pre-mount up there. Coming up to your engine door, you've got the handle here, so you're just going to lift that up, swing it out 90 degrees, open up your door. Your door is on a friction hinge, so it'll just stay where you kind of leave it. Then you can grab this pin on the left here, release it, pull your steps out to let them fall, and there you go. For adjusting the height of your steps, you've just got this little pin there, slide that out, and you can adjust the length of your legs. As we come on in, the first thing you see is right on the left there, you've got a fire extinguisher. Then right down here, you've got your converter and all of your breakers. So all of the breakers across the center top here, whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle. So you just want to turn it off and then back on. All of your fuses on the side here are all on a little LED circuit. So if a, a fuse were to pop, you'll get a little red LED beside it, letting you know exactly which one's gone. Up on the wall here. So your lower set of switches here, the one on the left is your hallway light. The one in the center this is your ceiling lights throughout the living, living room and kitchen. The one on the right is your accent lights, kind of just above the slides here. And then these two up top. The one on the right, I believe, is a scare light out front or a porch light. The one on the left is your pendant light, kind of right above your island there. For all of your slides, you've got individual button switches for each one, as well as one up in the bedroom. So you're just pressing and holding out, and they all make their way out. Get some clicks once it's extended all the way. Just like that. Same thing for the other slides. And now we'll get the back to you going. So that's your unit's back half opened up. I'll get to the uh, bedroom once we're up there. Um, awning, press and hold extend, same thing as your slides. So that switch on the top right there, the set of two, that is your awning light right there. out all the way you're just looking for that end flap there to come down if you were to continue extending out beyond that it'll actually wind itself up backwards in which case it'll begin to hold water and it'll just accelerate the growth of mold and mildew the water of course is the biggest killer of these or one of the biggest killers for these things um, if it were to start raining it's of course going to be holding water so you can grab this arm pull it down and what that'll do is it'll just change the pitch of the awning allowing water to then run off uh, I am six foot three, so you may want a ladder, a step ladder for this. You can do the same thing at the back arm here, pull that down a little bit, and that just gives you a little bit more shade, just kind of angled nicer. Before you ever bring them in though, you just want to make sure they are fully extended and straight. And then we're just pressing and holding the track. So 
So you can see as it winds up, it keeps the fabric up top, allows water to run off rather than to pool. that so right below those two switches we've got this little black box here press the button on the bottom you can go into my rv in which case you can access all of your control panels your troubleshooting videos owner's manuals things like that all the information from forest river is pretty well right there or from lippert sorry we'll go back to the main menu here just press by that little home button and you've got the leveling here so you can press leveling go into that and we'll just hit auto level so these are the exact same controls that you found outside up front of the unit just a little bit less involved as I'd said, where you can just hit it and should be able to just go into auto level here and it'll do it. There we go. So we'll hit auto level and she's just automatically gonna level itself. So while it's doing this, you can see here, it says, please remain still. If I can, I'd be outside of the unit just so that I know that there's no movement happening. Just that movement could potentially throw off the sensor that's looking for level. And of course, if at any point you realize that your legs might be going and hitting something or if something's not feeling right, you can just hit abort and it'll immediately stop. Now this will take a minute. You can hear the legs working the whole time. Not too sure if that's coming through on the video, but you can hear them working the whole time. So just right here, just while that thing's going, right off to the side of it, we've got your inverter control on or off. Pretty simple there. You push that, turn it on, it's gonna draw off of your batteries to provide 120 power to your fridge. However, we're plugged in right now, so we don't need that on. So you can hear it's just kind of doing its small little adjustments now. This is kind of where it's really important that you have no movement in the unit. And once it succeeds, it'll just give you a little message letting you know. So after that, you can just hit into home. You can go back home and all I asked for was home. <laughs> there we go. All right, and so then following all the switches back up to the top, we've got your monitor panel here. So like I said, your water heater is just on the switch to controls inside. That's it right there. That light will come on, letting you know that ignition will start. Once that light goes out, ignition has started. It'll do that three times. And if that light were to come back on and stay on, it's letting you know that it hasn't fired up. So at that point, you'll be going out and hitting that reset that I'd shown you. Stood right here, you can hear the clicking of the igniter going, and then you can actually hear the whir of the flame actually gone up. So I know that's good right now. Right beside it is your water pump. So you'd turn that on, turns on your fresh water pump, drawing out of either the fresh water tank or the antifreeze hose based on what you have selected outside. And as we go up, we've got your battery here. So we're, because we're plugged in right now, we're currently charging. 
as it went down, it would go to good, fair, and then low. Fresh water tank here, so as you fill that up, it'll go from empty to a third, two thirds, then full. And same idea for your black, your gray one, and your gray two. Uh, like I'd said outside, you were actually labeled for gray and galley, so, do, so your gray two is actually your galley. And then right here, you've just got your thermostat. So you're just gonna press mode, it's also power, and wait, so it'll start from off. Then you can hit mode again, you go into your fan speed. Now if you're looking just to move some air around, you can go and select high or low, and it'll run the air conditioning fan on high or low. However, if you're actually looking to use something, I recommend going on auto, just because that cycles the fan as most appropriate. So we'll hit mode after that, you get into cooling, select your temperature on the side, and because we're on auto, it'll activate that air conditioner with a fan either high or low based on how close or far we are from our target temperature. And so with your air conditioner going, you basically got two different options. You can have this louver here closed, in which case it's using all of the ceiling ducts to move its air. Or you can open it up and it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. So what I recommend typically is once you get out to your campsite, you want to have that open, cool off this area as quick as possible, and then start spreading it out to get the rest of the unit comfortable. So after cool, if we hit mode again, it'll go into furnace. And of course, just select your temperature. Again, because we're on auto, it'll turn off the air conditioning fan, it'll turn on the furnace fan. If you were on high or low, it could actually continue running the air conditioning fan, which is of course pulling in outside fresh air, which defeats the purpose of running your furnace. So your furnace is moving its air through all these little black ducts that you can see kind of down by the floor there, as well as I think a couple of floor registers in here. So after furnace, we'll just hit mode again and it cycles back to off and just kind of restart cycling around. into your dinette area here. You just got the little light back left there is this light switch. All of the blinds throughout the unit are just these little slow risers. You just kind of let them fall up or fall down. You sit where you leave them kind of. Over here we've got USB outlet as well as two power outlets. The majority of the outlets in this unit are going to be GFI protected. So you've got a test right there and reset up top. So if you ever have an outlet that doesn't work, this is a good thing to come and check. Right below it, we've got your propane detector. So propane is heavier than air. If there's a leak in the trailer, it would sit on the floor. What this guy does, it just detects it and starts going off just like a smoke alarm. Coming back, we've got some more GFI protected outlets and two more USB outlets. Bunch of storage. A bit more storage here. Little liquor cabinet, I guess you could call it. So emergency exit there, you just open it wide and jump out of this side here. A little seating area with two lights above it. This couch, I believe, folds out. So you're just gonna grab your two back cushions, toss them off to the side. And grab the bottom seat here, up and out. Fold out the legs. Let it drop. And then in the back, you're just gonna fold that down. And that's your bed. If you wanted to, you could take the cushions and stuff them on the back just so that you've got that kind of uh, head space there. So we'll lift the back back up, the legs back up, fold them back in, in half and down. Grab our cushions again. And that's that. So up to the front. Got two outlets here, got the two lights as well. Storage, bookshelf, right across the top. As well as a bit more storage to either side. You can open up this back piece here. Another exit window. Right down here, this switch, press and hold up. The TV shoots up.
As for your remote and owner's manuals and everything else for the TV, you'll get a little blue pouch that contains all of that. Uh, all of your hookups and everything for your TV are all concealed in the back there. So you got the little power outlet and all that. So drawers all across the side here. Another USB outlet on this side and the other. Furnace outlets. Got your stereo down here. It's the power button up top there, turn it on. After that, the Bluetooth, we've got all of your controls, like for your phone, you got uh, the hang up and the answer. Uh, those are also your seeks. Down on the bottom there, you got your mode selection or also the stop. Right here, we've got our selection. You can go through discs, of course, can be like your DVD or CD. USB right in the front there. Auxiliary again, just in the front. And Bluetooth again. Bluetooth. Bluetooth pairing, you're just gonna hit that guy right there and that'll connect to your phone. If you ever have any issues with it, just grab the head of a pen and just stick it into there and that's your reset for it. Volume just on this side here, as well as all of your settings can change just through that as well. All right, so power button, turn it back off and that's that. Fireplace here on the right, you got your power button to turn it on. Center right, you got your timer, 30 minutes up to I think eight hours, five hours, five hours. Center left, you've got your light, so you've got three different light colors that you can go through. And we've also got temperature selection, so high, off, and low. Just press and hold down and the TV will come down. As long as it's on its mount, right? side of your viewing area it's the same thing you just got the couch which folds out with the two lights folds out the exact same way as for this chair here we've got the light which will do the by the foot as well as your cup holder you got the massage which is of course the massage feature up and down and you've also got a heated seat here and once you turn it on it does illuminate the button to let you know that it is on and once you've got it on if you were to knock it is of course going to turn itself off so you can hit that lock right there it'll illuminate red letting you know that none of these can be turned off or on so turn that all back off then up into your kitchen here you just got the little pantry off to the side right here power outlets as well as a little light up here a little bit more storage, another light, microwave here, so just like home, not much I can teach you there. Right below it, we've got your range hood, so you got lights as well as your fan. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it, so you want to make sure that fan is on and evacuating said fumes. Cover, just the bifold, flips back. Turn it over to the little flame there, hit the sparker, and as it clears the air out of the system, when the propane gets here, she'll fire up. Same for the other two. And then of course, temperature selection is going down. Over on the right, that button there illuminates all of your knobs as well as your stove. So open up the stove and turn its right knob over to the little flame. Hit the sparker and then at the very back, should see that pilot light come to you. it goes just hold the, the knob in for another couple seconds then you can release it and it'll hold itself and then just turn up to your desired temperature she fires right up for you once you're done you're just going to go back to the pilot light and it can hold the pilot light for you however if you're leaving the trailer for a while or going traveling you just want to make sure that thing is right off so beside We've got your fridge. It is a household style fridge. So like I was saying earlier, 120 volt only. Mm. 
Real nice large fridge. You've got all of your controls right here. It's simple touch controls. It's really nice. On the sides, you do have the little travel locks. So just make sure those are off. You can open it up. You've got your little chilling drawer, as well as your freezer in the bottom. When traveling, you definitely want to make sure that your travel locks are just in place, just like so. Just because if they do come open while you're traveling, they're going to take out your island here. It's a little coffee making area. You've got another power outlet there, another cabinet, a bunch of storage here with all the drawers. And down beside it, we've got the return air for your furnace. So you just want to make sure that doesn't get blocked off. Another little pantry area. So that's your blue pouch there. It contains all of your owner's manuals, remotes for your TV. And then up top here, another little cubby. Right above it, or us right now, is your smoke detector. Now, I can't really reach that to test it, but have good faith in me, it works. And up into the bathroom here. It's got three light switches up on the wall there. One on the right turns on your fan. One in the center is your lights. The one on the left is a little accent light underneath here. So this is another GFI protected outlet. This one will do the front half of the trailer, whereas the one on the island did the back half. So test on the bottom, reset up top. Hot and cold water, of course. Shower with the standard head, three foot hose. And some more storage space back here. That is a furnace outlet down there and it does get fed pretty well. We had the furnace running in this uh, unit just for a little while before we started this video and it is considerably warmer in the bathroom than anywhere else. So you just wanna make sure that if you do have something there, it's not something that's gonna absorb that heat and potentially melt anything around it. Look out in the hallway here, you just got the uh, slow rise blind. And up into the bedroom. It's pretty tight with the slide closed, but you do have the light switch there. And then for your slide out, just press and hold out and the bed will make its way out. You've got another thermostat up here because you've got another air conditioner up here. So like I'd said outside, this is a 50 amp unit. You could run both air conditioners if you're on a 50 amp service. On a 30 amp service, you're gonna have to choose one or the other though. But same thing here, it's just going through your mode. You get into cool, select your temperature, and that's that. I don't believe this thermostat is hooked up to your furnace, so it won't run it. This slide right here, so press and hold that, actually moves your head of your bed. So you can rise that up, or you can bring it down. For storage purposes and being able to get through the unit while it's closed up in the lot, I like to keep it up. Right back here, we've got a TV backer, so you can mount the TV up there if you like. Right up top of it, we've got your cable, cable and satellite on the right side there, and in the center is your antenna outlet. So you can see that little green light in the back there, it's just letting you know your antenna is turned on. Just turn that off, just let it's not draining out your battery. And then beside it, of course, is your power outlet. Drawers below. And if you pick up the foot of your bed, you've got a little bit of storage underneath it. Just being mindful of the gears and everything back there, it's your slide mechanism. And then for your closet, just barn doors slide open. And that's that. On the right side there, it is set up for a washer dryer to be installed. It is all set up already with the water lines and the uh, drill location for the vent. Let's try the latch at the bottom there, just lock it back up. And that's that. For these blinds here, they are just leave where you like them. So I believe that is about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.